the humble yellow onion. A somewhat obvious choice given its pugnant excretions. Natural chemicals likely to interact and react with ammonia. And boy, do they! I worked with thinly sliced, then halved, and finely chopped onions. I made an onion, copper, onion sandwich, wrapped in cloth and drizzled one teaspoon of ammonia, popped into a zip bag, a little squeezy squeezy, and cooked for four days. After soaking in warm water, I carefully removed the cloth and onion debris, but found the onions did not want to come off. Rather than pull harder and risk damage to the patina, I let the patina dry for 24 hours, then gently brushed the dried onion debris off. But the patina was very chalky, so I gently washed the patina in warm water. And the result? Once again, the landscape has changed completely. As the results between chopped and sliced onions are so different, let's have a look at the two patinas separately. We'll do sliced onions first. I cooked up some more samples. What a wild ruckus of colors, textures, and forms. Let's have a look up close. Quite astonishing. What a lovely wash of colors, blues, greens, browns, and a purple haze. Just look at those copper veins. There is definitely a sense of abstract imagery. Let's have a look at the bottom. I could have used paint and canvas to create this energetic blend of colors. Here too are layers of blues, greens, browns, purple, and copper veins, but I didn't. This is all Mother Nature's work. I'm really digging onions. Let's have a look at. It's like watching something grow under a microscope. There's so much visual texture. Although, if you ran your finger across the patina, you could feel the surface is quite flat. One day, I was eating rice and thought, I wonder what would happen if I... So I made a soy sauce rice copper soy sauce rice sandwich, wrapped it in cloth, drizzled two teaspoons of ammonia, popped into a zip bag, a little squeezy squeezy, and cooked for four days. Then I soaked in warm water for five minutes, gently removed rice bits, mindful not to pull off the patina. And well, I have to say, really like. I also thought I should have a rice-only sample to compare, so I cooked one up. Interesting. The overall texture is the same, but the colors are very different. It would appear rice and ammonia all by themselves create blues and purples whereas soy sauce brings a titch of green to the blue and adds a blackish brown. You know I had to stop and play. So I cooked up some more samples, nine more to be precise, but decided not to show them in this tutorial. During my research, I cooked up over 300 samples. I'm not going to show them all in this tutorial. We could be here all day. But you can see most of them at our Creating Linus Facebook page. Why only most? At this point, I'm not willing to commit to all of my patina samples ending up on Creating Linus's Facebook. Why not? Frankly, I didn't have enough time or budget to process all 300 plus patina samples and get them onto our Facebook page all by myself. But there are additional samples for you to have a look at, and I'll continue to post new patina samples when I can. So do have a look. Which brings me to our Facebook page. Please friend us. Then you can post images of your patina samples and finished flower earrings and tell us all about them. I made a radish copper radish sandwich wrapped in cloth, drizzled one teaspoon of ammonia, popped into a zip bag, a little squeezy squeezy, and cooked for four days. After soaking in warm water, the radish, like the onion before it, did not want to come off. So I let dry for 24 hours and carefully removed the radish debris. As expected, the patina was chalky, so I gave it a gentle wash in warm water. The result, holy freaky eyeball, Batman. You know, I had to cook up some more samples. What can I say? Freaky, spacey, eyeball-y, celly? Celly, you know, like cells in the body and somewhat disturbing. I really like them. 
So one day, I、uh, grated some red radishes and made a grated red radish, copper grated red radish sandwich wrapped in cloth, tied with a bit of yarn, drizzled one teaspoon of ammonia, popped into a zip bag, a little squeezy squeezy, and cooked for three days. After soaking in warm water, the grated red radish was still stuck like glue. It took three days to fully dry. I carefully removed the dried red radish debris. As expected, the patina was chalky. So I gave it a gentle wash in warm water. The result? Very lovely. You know I like my greens. Now I'm wondering what strained grated red radish pulp and red radish juice would offer up. Let's have a side by side look. Again, we see a very distinctive difference between different reactive materials. We also begin to see a distinctive difference between how those reactive materials are used. 